Greetings. So I've mentioned before how I was looking for meaning in my life and for belonging and for spirituality and for the patterns in my life that belong to the past, to my family system and how releasing and healing them could create freedom in my own life. And then doing the um, years and years of training in uh, systemic work and shamanic work, I have come to a place where, um, where I feel that I'm leaving the flow, that I am experiencing this sense of deep fulfillment in what I do in, in who I am and how my life is shaping up. And of course, there are ups and downs and, and different situations, but there is enough support and the feeling of being held by the ancestors, by the place that I occupy in my own lineage, where I know where I stand and who is there to support me, that anything that comes my way, I can deal with. So I was going to share uh, a bit about the um, different elements of this work that might create this sense for you as well, this experience of meaning and belonging. One of the elements of this work is um, embodiment. So a lot of things that we do in the family constellations, in the systemic ritual, is focusing on our body sensations. So um, there is an element called representing, where you are asked to represent a family member for somebody for whom we do a constellation. And when you are representing, all you're doing is you're focusing on your body sensations, physical, emotional, whatever is present, whatever comes up. And practice shows, constellation after constellation, that when you're tuning into your body wisdom, you do in some way receive some body sensations that altogether make sense to the one who is watching their constellation. So you might behave exactly like their grandmother did or say the word that it sounds exactly like she would have said. And doing this work creates this incredible trust to your own body. You learn how to listen to what is present and to interpret it in a way that becomes really helpful for your daily life. It also creates this very practice, just being with your own body and trust in it, creates incredible sense of meaning. So this in itself is already a lot. And sometimes for some people, this is exactly what they need and this is just what they do. They show up to represent every month, several times a month, being in different roles, in different situations, in different um, life stories, somehow with every next role, working with their own stories, working with their own feelings. And it's very powerful for knowing yourself, for learning about yourself, for suddenly getting insights about your own family system and how it sits within you, where in your body you're holding tension that comes from way back in time and letting it go, liberating your body, becoming more confident with yourself. It also adds to creating the sense of belonging, when you know and trust yourself. First place of your belonging is your own body. When you feel at home here, exactly where you are right now, within yourself. And then every other belonging just falls into place with a little bit more work and exploration. But your first root is exactly where you are with yourself. Then we also, in the constellations, we also talk about the orders of love. And to summarize them, um, they come down to um, three orders, principles. 
and uh, they're called principles or orders because um, again with practice with uh, with constellation after constellation um, we've discovered that every family system irrespective of where they are in the world would work better and feel healthier and stronger if those orders are observed and that could be completely unconscious of course knowingly or unknowingly and if those principles are out of balance then we notice that there are different situations that are um, weakening the family system creating different symptoms illnesses uh, relationship breakdowns and so on and so forth so looking at those orders and just noticing um, some of them will immediately um, highlight something for you so let's see and as as i go through them just see if anything resonates with you and your own family system one of the orders is the order of time meaning that those who came first to the system give to those who came afterwards so parents give to their children grandparents give to parents parents give to children so the flow of love and life flows from the past from generation to generation into the future and that um, requires a particular sense of respect and I completely understand that the stories are, are very different and the, uh, um, the situation with the parents and grandparents can be um, quite intense. So uh, being asked to have respect uh, might be a bit of a challenge. But when the, when the order, when the flow flows freely and the order is observed, this comes naturally the respect for those who gave us life for those who came first and from whom life is flowing to us and then from us to the next generation so we are the, those who are giving to the next ones and they would give to the to the future ones and when we can turn to our parents and say you are big and i'm small you give and i receive Thank you for my life. I take it fully. When there is freedom and ease in saying these words, the flow is restored. If there is some tension in saying those words, there might be some work needed. Um, another order that we look at is the order of place. Uh, that everyone who has ever entered the family system has a place in it. They belong. So one of the first things we're looking in the, um, in the stories of the lineage is who is excluded. And often these are the unborn children. Uh, and also often this is the, um, uh, the previous significant partners. Surprisingly, so many... Um, so many of us are not taking it too seriously. So if, if we have a different partner and a different family, somehow the first one is disregarded, especially if there was some tension and maybe not a, um, not a loving separation or maybe even quite traumatic separation. So, you know, we'd rather not think about it and completely exclude it from the system. But because they were significant partners, to some extent, the next partner, the next family, owes their place in your life to the absence of this other partner in your life. So if that partner stayed with you, everything after that that you have now wouldn't have happened. So there is a connection. And those exclusions, they're, they're crucial to the well-being of the family system. So when we can include everyone who's been excluded, we can breathe deeper, we can relax, we can take our own place in our system rather than holding those empty places for other people who've been excluded. 
And then one more important order is the order of exchange. So this is when you're looking at giving and receiving. Who is giving more? Who is receiving more? And it's not necessarily between partners. It could be also with your workplace, for example, or with friends or with other people in your, um, in your surrounding, but also with the land, for example. Um, and often what we are noticing is that when, when there is too much given, the debt becomes too big to be returned. So then we get surprised, how come they left? How come the relationship broke down? I've given so much. But for the other one, the debt is too heavy to carry. So it's easier for them to check out rather than to try and give it back to you. So just checking where maybe um, you are not receiving openly. Maybe the other one gives too much and you're just receiving, not knowing how to give back, not knowing how to receive well, fully. So these are the, the summary, the three orders, uh, and there is more behind them. But this is just a quick glimpse for you to look and just sense into where there might be an imbalance or to celebrate where there is harmony in your own family system. And another quick note is on the resources and the family. So to do this work effectively, to do the healing effectively, you have to be supported. You have to have resources to hold you in all those shifts and changes so that you go through it in a good way without, you know, without too much breaking down um, but held and supported. And this is why we work a lot with ancestors. So we look all the way back to the ancient ones and we create this relationship, tapping into the resources that are in the ancestral field, tapping into all the power and wisdom of all those who've been on this earth already, who've experienced everything, all the feelings, all the possible situations, when we think how many people were there before us so that we now can have our life and that we can really learn from them, really um, embody their strengths, their qualities that are uh, serving us well in our own work, in our own changes and growth. Um, so when, when we are constantly in touch with that power behind us, whatever life throws our way, we handle in a better way, in an easier for us way. It doesn't stop throwing things at us, but we are more, our foundation is more stable. We feel more present, more grounded to be able to hold anything and also to be able to let go quicker and easier. So this is some of the some of the foundational principles and elements of this work that helps to create more meaning, more connection, more belonging, um, and helping to um, illuminate the patterns that you're holding in your life, and also that you're creating for future generations. How is what you do, the actions and the pain? And, and the celebration and the joy that you experience in your life, how is it going to flow forward with the life that you pass on and with the impacts that you leave in this world, with your presence, with, with your being? So this is some of the things that I wanted to share with you today. And um, thank you for, <laughs> for being here all this time and, and I'm hoping that you're learning a little bit from this.